Hello, my name's Nikki Seville and I'm the project leader of the Christian Arts Festival. I also coordinate Cheltenham Prayer for Schools Network, which is incredibly important to me. Because our children are the most beautiful creatures and they are our future and so are our young people, our teenagers and here at the Christian Arts Festival we do everything to facilitate as much as we can to keep them stimulated, to keep them thinking imaginatively, to keep them being creative and I want to inspire them today and encourage them to have a go and join in in making a fantastic installation where we can all contribute and it's not just for children, it's for people who are feeling vulnerable at the moment, for people that are feeling isolated, the beautifully mature amongst us. And this has been inspired by a festival that we were holding this year in Wadden. And we were going to make these willow lanterns stars and little houses to make a miniature wadden and of course unfortunately like so many other things it's being cancelled but we're not losing heart there's so much we can do with our technology these days and that's what I'm proving now making a video for you to say will you make a house for our miniature wadden you never know if this goes further afield we could perhaps be really fulfilling our vision for the Christian Arts Festival that's not only for Cheltenham where it originated but for the whole country, that every town, every city, every hamlet celebrates what God's given us in our beautiful planet, our beautiful earth and our creative talents our wonderful gifts through the arts, be it music, singing, playing a musical instrument, whatever it is, you know, sometimes we forget problem solving is creative, exploring things as a scientist is creative, following our faith, we can do it in so many creative ways, to share with others what we feel, the passion in our heart, we believe in a creator God. Anyway, I can go on endlessly about this sort of thing, but let's get going. You only need a few things to facilitate this exercise. And one of the best things about it is you can probably find all your resources at home or in your garden or on a walk. We've all got that attic with sort of secret little treasures tucked away, little bits of fabric, a knitted jumper, um, an old dress, a pair of trousers, all sorts of things that we could just get out. We're going to be making these beautiful structures. This video started with a little tour round of what was created in our first workshop last week. We just managed to get in there and the participants just came up with the most beautiful, beautiful creations. So now it's your turn. We're all unique. We're all going to come out with something different. So there's no template that you have to stick to. There's no measurement. Just open your mind and just go for it in whatever you feel called to do. I believe that God if we ask him in prayer before we start anything like this, he will guide us, he'll come through us. We can be a vehicle. We can be a vehicle together, just bringing joy, just lifting up, lifting up our mood if we're feeling flat. You know, there's so much challenging now, so much. You know, there's lots of anxiety out there, lots of stress, but somehow if you get creative and you make something, it can actually transform all that angst into a thing of beauty. At the moment, I also have the privilege of heading up the creative arts for the Gloucester, of, for the Diocese Gloucester. One Bible of verse we go back to 
Bishop Rachel's our patron and she is often referring to the verse which is living life in all its fullness. And very often this is the challenges. Often creative things can be a challenge. So let's embrace it today. Let's embrace the challenge. Maybe you had an exam you were going to be revising for. Instead, you've got more time on your hands perhaps to do this and just make your own very special little house for Wadden or for your community, for your school. It could be a little palace, it could be a camper van, it could be an opera house, it could be the hut you'd always dreamed of having in your garden all sorts of things. I just know you'll come up with something original. And after all, home is where the heart is. And if you're in your home now, you will find around you all these things I'm going to show you. Just basic things to get going. I'm going to turn the camera around and you can have a look at my table. Yes, you can see a bit of a gluey mess. Something I am is a bit chaotic, but I am an organized person as well. And they say organization, chaos together makes creativity. So there you go. So what we need is a pair of scissors. We need masking tape. Now it's a really, really good idea to have something that's quite a good quality. I'm afraid the cheap stuff won't do because it's not sticky enough. I have found that you can use parcel tape, but just maybe cut it into strips because you don't need anything that broad. We also need some wire. Here's some wire. It's not essential, uh, but we attach it to the top of the house so we could hang it from tree or railing or perhaps attach a little star to it, anything you want. Um, we need a tape measure, this type of a tape measure, or a dressmaking tape measure. We need glue. Glue, this can be two parts glue to one part water, about the consistency of single cream. a jug of water. Then we need our withies, our willow withies, but you could use bamboo or you could track down some branches on a walk, um, all sorts of things. You'll see this is my withies here and I've also got some bamboo. So either works. You're going to need to dampen the willow, so put it in a, in a bath and it's better to be soaked for about an hour. Right, so we're going to start by making the structure of the house, which is this. Now, as far as measurements, of course, it would be great to have these structures in every shape and size. So just let your imagination go wherever it wants to. Um, but I have done it. I've got certain measurements which are roughly what I've based this example on. So get your dampened willow. And first of all, we're going to make the two square structures. So you've got a large square there and a small square there. So making the large one first, I've actually done this 18 centimeters each side of the square. So get your tape measure and measure first of all
18 centimetres. And then you get a felt tip and make a mark. And once you've got made the mark, that's where you're going to bend the willow. Now, if it's dampened, it's going to bend all right without snapping. But if it snaps, don't worry about it because we reinforce it with some of our masking tape or whatever tape you've got. So that's 18 centimetres and then bend it. Then you're going to measure another 18 centimetres. Again, bend it at that point. Make a mark and bend it. Then I reinforce it just to make it stronger on that corner with the masking tape. Another stretch of 18 centimetres and the masking tape. And finally, you'll cut off at that point. So a willow, you can see, you know, they're much, much longer than that. So you'll be cutting them off to make your square. So once you've got your square, you're going to get some masking tape and join at that point. So I would have got lots of masking tape ready. It's always helpful to put it on the edge of a table and just start wrapping it around. It's also very relaxing and gives you time to think or listen to the radio, whatever you enjoy listening to, or some music. So there's one of our large squares next one you're going to do is the smaller square so take another piece of willow and this time i've done 10 centimeters each side on all four sides so you're going to measure 10 centimeters make a mark bend it another 10 centimeters make a mark bend it another 10 centimetres, make a mark, bend it, then cut it off from your main larger strip. And again, you will bring that together and wrap round tape to secure it. So that wasn't too difficult, was it? So we now have two squares. So we have the larger one at the bottom and the smaller one at the top. Then I've taken more willow. With the willow it thins off so you probably won't be using the last sort of six inches of the willow. So just use the sturdy stuff. So we're going to make both sides now. So you'll need four pieces roughly the same size. I've gone for 70 centimetres, so that's what that measures. So I've cut four stretches of that, of my withies. So take two. And what you're going to do is take your large square and you're going to attach it. I think they look quite attractive on stilts, but you can make them however you like. You can have them stilts or you can, you can make it quite low to the edges. And you're just going to take one of the withies and start wrapping tape around to put your large square in place. I'm sure you'll do a much neater job than I have. Of course it needs to be quite well supported because you don't want them falling over. Ultimately when they're made and if you haven't got tea bag fabric in large quantities, large sheets of it, it would take having many 
cups of tea, many cups of tea to, to get as much as I need to cover one house. You could think in terms of finding something else, like some sort of transparent fabric, like chiffon perhaps, or maybe even tulle, sort of netting type fabric that ballerinas make their tutus out of. So there we go, we've got two supports there. And we're going to get the next with Wivy. Put another extra one on. Doesn't matter once, doesn't matter how messy these are, because we will not see them once they're covered. Then at the end, we're going to light them from inside with an LED light or fairy lights. We thought for the, the installation of all the houses, would look so pretty if we put fairy lights inside and around the top. Hi. So, just had a little break there. We now have put the other two on, exactly like the front two. We've attached two more withies and they were both 70 centimetres long to the other side and fix them to the corners of the square with masking tape. Then we draw them up to the top, making sure that it stands well on the table. So just before you put your masking tape at the top of the roof, at the top of the roof here, you want to make sure that these four stilts are going to balance all right so that your house will stand up on the table. There we go. Okay, so at the top now, I'm going to just attach some masking tape again, bringing these all four of them together at the top. There is actually a wonderful organisation called Art and Christianity that a friend of mine, Jake Lever, actually won last year. And I thought, wouldn't it be fantastic if this installation, bringing in youth groups, bringing in groups of beautifully mature um, bringing in all sorts of organisations in community or people working at home in their spare time if they want to have a go at making a structure and if we brought them all together who knows we could fill a good part of a park and wouldn't it look stunning I was also thinking restoring paradise on that theme and going back to growing all our own vegetables. We could have allotments all around. Somebody could knit lots of vegetables. Trees love knitting. Any knitters out there could contribute to our new Garden of Eden, our restored planet. So there we go, we've got our structure. Isn't that fantastic? So simple, but so effective. Just to remind you of what my super group did last week. This is the next stage now. We're going to cover. And as I say, if you can think of some sort of fabric you've got that's very loosely woven perhaps or transparent like chiffon if you haven't got the tea bag fabric it's not really going to work it's going to be too fragile with just tissue paper so you do need something stronger than that 
but this could be rather than a gluing exercise it could be a sewing exercise so once you've made your structure you could cover in fabric and then decorate after that now next stage we're going to and I, this is where i become a three-year-old child which i don't mind being at all um i get very messy but there's somebody in the group last week who just didn't like having their hands sticky maybe this is a little barrier you might have well why not try and conquer that one so we're going to go with the tissue fabric and remember if you radius of Cheltenham, I will deliver this to you. I've got copious amounts all ready to go. We've come into my kitchen now, some more beautiful paintings on the wall. And down here is our kitchen table. And this is all the bits and bobs I've got together to decorate the house. And you'll see there's some lovely, lovely bits here. Uh, I just want to take you over here to show you these two images because these were the original inspiration. There you can see gorgeous willow lanterns made into stars. And there's what's inspired our little Wadden in Cheltenham, our miniature Wadden. And we've got some gorgeous little people there that you will, if you enjoy this workshop, we're going to show you how to make them. So in amongst, we've got tissue, we've got some lovely perspex type fabric here. We've got some fantastic wallpaper. This is the one I showed you, which has got trees on it. And so we've cut out the shapes of the branches and you saw some lovely blossom added to that. This was a good wallpaper with lots of shapes on it. I go to somewhere called Gloucester Resource Centre, which is at City Works, and you can fill a supermarket trolley for £10 there with loads of stuff that manufacturers end, end of lines that they don't want for some reason. So a great way to accumulate a lot of stuff. I have a very tolerant husband who has room here craft room you couldn't even walk in the door recently and he actually had to tidy it up because it became too much for me to face so he is a supporter in the background for this sort of thing right so then we need to put another square in the square we made earlier the smaller square goes to make up our top floor and I've just put that in the middle and secured it at each corner with tape. Now, before we cover it in teeth bag fabric, or perhaps you're going to do it with some other fabric, we're going to take a piece of wire, and if you've got some wire cutters, cut a piece of wire. Why I want it to be wire is I want something quite solid and stiff so we could attach perhaps a star to the top. These little houses to make up miniature Wadden in Cheltenham were all part of Festival of Stars. This was a wonderful festival this year that was going to take place on the 13th of June with music and comedy, loads of schools involved, youth group, circus skills, live bands, comedy, just a fantastic day out for the family. But of course, like so many other gatherings, it's been postponed. And at the festival, we were going to have this installation on show. And one of the competitions we hold is Starfest, hashtag Starfest selfie where people find either a star structure, that's something else we've been making, which you can have a go at too if you like. And these also will be lanterns lit up with LED lights or fairy lights. And this was a larger one. And 
and also here's a finished version. I never thought I'd become a Blue Peter presenter. Here's a finished version. So we've attached the wire at the top because um, it could hang from a tree or railing or something like that. And in the case of the houses, I've actually just attached a rather lovely cross there that my daughter Eliza gave me. But I thought on the theme of stars, we could attach stars at the top of our houses to go in with the theme of the Festival of Stars. So if you take a piece of wire to the top and just wrap it round, the reason we're putting it on now is when we cover with either our fabric or a tea bag material, we don't want to see the winding round where it's attached at the top. Okay, so we've got our piece of wire there. Now something else, which I'm not going to do in the demonstration, but it's something we do at the end, but I want to tell you now before I forget, taking one of the finished versions here. I thought that was so gorgeous with the blossom on the side. Really cute. This was one of our 12 year olds, Lily, who helped last week at the workshop. And what we've done is underneath, we've put a little platform just in cardboard. I've just cut out a rectangular to put there. And the reason for that is we want to put our LED light on there. So, of course, it's light now, so you're not really getting the, the proper effect. But, of course, that's going to be gorgeous in the darkness. It's going to be lit up. And that's an LED light. Okay. So with our finished structure, we're going to move on now to the next element, which is the gluey bit. Some people do not like getting their hands all glued up. I don't mind reverting to being a three-year-old. So I've got my tissue paper here and I've cut it. It doesn't really matter what shape, what size, how you cover it. But I've taken pieces about this size and what I do is I dip them now, scrunch it up and dip it into my glue, my glue which is two parts water to one part glue, glue, which makes a sort of single cream consistency. And here we go. So I've dipped it in the glue and come out with this nice little mess. Give it a good old squeeze. to open it out and attach it at the top, start from the top and you're going to just wrap it round. Do keep talking about this installation perhaps representing a utopia world and that reminds me to tell you that the theme of the festival Christian Arts Festival in 2021 which takes place for three weeks in April and May time is Eden, restoring paradise. And we've used the words to describe restoring paradise as 
beauty, care, destruction and restoration. There is an art competition on the website christianartsfestival.org and whoever wins that based on the theme of Eden that image will be chosen for the 2021 festival brochure the last large festival because it's a biennial festival was in 2019 and we had 80 events in 44 venues so it's really exciting how it has grown over the years. Since 2014, when we had our first meeting, calling all the churches, all denominations together so that we could unify and show the wider community that despite the fact we're all unique and we all worship in of slightly different ways this is why we need so many denominations we can come together in the arts we can join choirs and sing together we can be in art exhibitions together we can be in drama groups we can put on plays together and a wonderful message the the wider world of collaboration, of celebrating our Creator God together and being so grateful of all our creative gifts. So as you see, I'm gradually going round covering the structure. It's really good to do two layers and I'm not going to carry on doing that while you're watching this video but do two layers it's just going to make it stronger and be more effective at the end and last longer so as you go around smooth it all out and what I found was the best thing to do was at the bottom to just wrap it round the bottom like that and tuck it in. Okay, I unfortunately haven't got any newspaper. That's something I haven't done in years is read newspapers because of being so busy arranging events. Um, I do read an awful lot, but not newspapers. I might return to that if they're still available, <laughs> which we hope they will be. Wonderful that we can work from home these days. So journalists can work at home and submit their editorial features to their head offices. There we go, so just to show you, we've covered it all round. And then the next stage is to do the covering, the decorating to your own design. You could perhaps make a sketch before you set off. You can use anything at all. Just a few ideas we had was, we, we actually found some wallpaper which had trees on it, so we cut the trees out and then put the little pieces of tissue on to make it seem like blossom. But there you go. And that is, just to remind you what can be created. This was particularly my star of the show, which was from my friend Catherine who made that. I want to open in a prayer. Now, if you want to make this your prayer, say, I'm Amen after me. We say that in our Open the Book team when we go into Christchurch School. Lord, we thank you for the beauty of your creation. We thank you how you've gifted us with extraordinary talent 
of all sorts. We thank you that sometimes people recognize it in us and we never knew we had it. We thank you, Lord, that we have a chance now for maybe some more freedom, for some time to be creative ourselves. We thank you that if we were made in your image, our potential for creativity must be immeasurable. We thank you for the excitement of that. And Lord, Father God, we are sorry that we have fallen short in looking after our planet. We are sorry that we haven't made the right rules to stop certain animal eating practices that are harmful for us that may have started this pandemic. Lord, we ask you now to give us your wisdom, to give us your protection, particularly for health workers, for the vulnerable, for the beautifully mature. And we ask for hope, Lord. We ask for hope for our young people, for their future. Oh, Lord, please help us change our ways. Help us to take care of our planet as you instructed us. And Lord, help us today, guide us as we make our own creation for ourselves, for our families, for Wadden, or for our own community, our own little town, our own city, wherever we are. And just thank you, Lord, for being with us. And perhaps, you know, in difficult times, people will think you're distant I'm hearing amazing things. I'm hearing that maybe our children will be walking to school and there won't be as much pollution in the air. I'm hearing that there are dolphins in the canals in Venice. I'm hearing that in China, the smog is lifted and there's clear skies and they haven't experienced that before. That just fills me with joy, Lord. And I just pray for everybody who makes a house that if they're in a sad place, that is transformed into joy. In Jesus' precious name, Amen.